Sure. Yep. It's starting to roll. You're gonna be a bad motherfucker. One and a half years is a long time, but it's an almost unheard of length of time when we're talking about bestseller charts. It might have felt like Wet 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 was at the number one slot for a year and a half, but that's because 15 weeks of torture can feel like a very long time indeed. Robocop for the ZX Spectrum sat at the top of the bestsellers charts for a year and a half. That's 18 months. What got it there, and what kept it there, is up for deliberation, but a large part of that success was down to the sheer quality offered on that unassuming cassette tape. 92% from Crash, 95% from CVG, 93% from Sinclair User. The high scores went on and on, and it seems like Robocop fever just wouldn't die down. The film released in 1988 on these shores, as did the Spectrum game, and both have become cult favourites in their own respective circles. Robocop, the movie that is, still stands strong as one of my favourite films. And the game? I never played it. Well, that's a lie. I did play it. I played it round at a friend's house who kept hogging the controls. It was supposed to be one of those, you have a go, then I'll have a go, but it was more like, you have a very small go, and then I'll have ten. I got as far as the second level, and from what I played, I remembered loving it, but for whatever reason, it never ended up in my own collection, and my memories of it just faded away. I didn't realise at the time that it was anywhere near as successful as it was, and in fact, it was only when doing a bit of research before writing up this review that the impact of the game truly dawned on me. By this point, I'd already played through the entire thing, and I can happily say that its lasting legacy is one that certainly resonates with me. Let's look at the game then. Or rather, let's first have a look at the loading screen. It's not often that I mention a loading screen in my reviews, but hot cheese and biscuits. This is an absolute blinder. Bill Harbison was the artist, and his work on ZX Spectrum games is something that just cannot be overstated. When you had to sit and watch a game load for five minutes, that loading screen was your first impression of the game. It was the thing that set your imagination racing. The thing that usually set your expectations way too high, or bored you senseless. Bill's work on Robocop was one of the last things to be added, but it's the first thing you'll see, and mmm, mmm, that's some tasty pixel. If you're unaware, Bill is still working to this day, and he also has his own Etsy shop. I'll leave a link in the description below for those of you who want to drink from Bill's beautiful cup. Sorry, that sounds weirdly sexual, I apologise. On to the game then, and no, you know what, we're not even moving on to the game yet, because I need to talk about the title music. This music has absolutely nothing to do with Robocop the film and its incredible soundtrack, but it's still just as iconic to the franchise. I am a huge fan of electronic music to the point where I have it tattooed down my right bloody arm and this track is breathtakingly simple. So good, in fact, is the track that it was adapted to the Game Boy port. And then it was used in an Ariston advert. And on. And on. And on. And Ariston. And then it was used by Charlie Brooker for his documentary How Video Games Change the World. It was unnecessarily good, considering we should have all been disappointed that it wasn't the theme from the film, and our ears weren't given a rest there either. Once we hit fire and started the game up, we're treated to this. For the public trust. For 
protect the innocent, uphold the law. I still can't believe this. I still can't believe that the ZX Spectrum was producing speech that sounded this clear. The developers, Mike Lamb, Dawn Drake, and Jonathan Dunn, pulled a solid triple whammy before the controls had even been given to us. I honestly can't think of many ZX Spectrum games that give such a clear first impression of the quality that waits behind it. Which leads us to the game. Here we are at last, and what do we have? It's a scrolling shooter. I think deep down that's what we all would have expected, but the game is certainly more than the sum of its parts. First, the graphics are immediately clear and crisp with the cartoony outline that makes characters pop out from the background. Animation equally matches the slow methodical pace of Robocop and enemies are built to match. The stompy walk has to be gotten used to pretty damn quick too because enemies come from all angles and shoot in multiples. The first set of enemies you'll come across for instance are a tightly packed group of three and if you walk in unprepared, as I did here, they'll instantly pepper you with a layer of bullets so thick it'll be like that scene where Murphy dies all over again. It wouldn't make for a particularly brilliant film or game if Murphy died off within 20 seconds of becoming Robocop, so thankfully we've got a life bar that takes a fair bit of flack before we lose a life. The main thing you're going to be losing your life to, however, is stun lock. Murphy instantly locks into this pained expression when he's hit, and he stays like that for a good while. This means enemies can absolutely pound on you. There were multiple times when the game stun locked me so hard I lost half my damn health bar. And this leaves us with a healthy paradox. Robocop moves about as fast as a handful of slugs, but you need to react quickly if you want to get anywhere. Without some prior practice, I managed to get to around the third level of the game, but it was only on restarting that I started to realise the enemies always come in the same patterns. Robocop is a game that rewards your knowledge of the game pretty heavily, and the power of foresight is a strong game winner. After playing the first level for the fifth time, I was often shooting before the enemies had even appeared, or avoiding ones I knew I didn't need to bother with. It doesn't happen often, but avoiding enemies altogether can be a useful tactic, even if it doesn't feel very Robocop to do that. Prime Directive number 4 certainly wasn't leg it before you get shot, but still. Conserving ammo can be a boon, especially if you've picked up one of the available special weapons. You start off with a standard pistol that'll take out enemies in anywhere between 2-6 to six shots, but you can find a piercing weapon that absolutely floors weaker enemies, especially in groups, and helps get rid of these awful bloody chainsaw men. I've no idea why these chainsaw guys take such a beating, but there you are. The third weapon is a three-way spread, which you don't get until much later in the game, and the fourth weapon is fantastic. I'll talk about that later. So, we've got the basics out of the way, we've fought our way through the mean streets of level one, and Robocop heads off down an alley. Uh, just a note here, I absolutely love the fact that on completion of a level, Robocop shouts his name like some sort of terrifying Pokemon. Pikachu! Gengar! Robocop! If you've not played the game before, you'd be forgiven for thinking that this is all the game had to offer, but there's a decent amount of variety in Robocop's relatively short time frame. At the end of level 1, we're treated to the hostage situation seen from the film. No crotch shots available here, unfortunately, and you'd also expect to be able to take the bastard out with one shot, but no. This guy is some sort of super criminal. Do your best to take the guy out without killing the woman. Remember, protect the innocent. When level 2 begins, it may put you into a false sense of security. It appears that we're about to get more of the same, but in actual fact... Well, it sort of is more of the same, but coupled with some new enemy types. These rough housing bikers in particular are the speediest enemies you'll come up against, and it may be the first time you notice that Robocop also has the ability to punch. If an enemy gets close enough to you, the fire button will instead make Murphy extend his arm with extreme prejudice. This is also the only thing you'll have to rely on if you ever run out of bullets. Don't run out of bullets. Partway through level 2, you'll get the chance to see Hitler in a petrol station. Not sure what that's all about, and then we're whisked away to another minigame. This is the one that stuck out in my memories as something that seemed incredibly cool. You're tasked with matching a facial likeness of Emil Antonowski. The picture you need to match is different each time, uh, otherwise it would be slightly too easy. So don't expect him to look anything like he does in the film. You swap out various face parts until you get a match. I love this part. It's literally the only time it happens in the game. Thanks for the tease, Ocean. 
Level 3 expands on the levels that came before it, quite literally by having us traverse sets of stairs. This is where avoiding enemies becomes practically impossible, as you'll need to walk along every platform at some point. So you best have your aim down, because the difficulty here is roughly where the game begins to peak. Here's one complaint I will levy at the game while we're on the subject. Enemies that shoot at knee height are impossible to dodge, and while taking a bit of damage is usually fine, there are health pickups throughout the level, getting stun locked by low bullets and then getting absolutely pounded by everyone else, it can lead to some frustration. This again is where your memory and practice with the game comes into play. Knowing the lay of the land, where enemies are going to be arriving from, where the weapon pickups are, it's standard fare for an arcade game of this type and Robocop, at its core, is an action-packed, pattern-matching game. It's like playing Simon with ultraviolence. At the end of level 3, we get to the meatiest battle of the film, the fight with ED-209, and... Uh, okay, look, it was never going to match the film in terms of spectacle, but... Well, here's some highlights from the film battle. And here's what you do in the game. You just punch him in the face. You just straight up punch him to death. Well, at least ED-209 was in the game, let's leave it at that. Level 4 introduces lift shafts in replacement of stairs and the difficulty level remains at much the same height as level 3. Once we hit level 5 though, we get the reward we have been waiting for, the final weapon. After killing this guy, who I initially thought was Clarence until he reappears later, we get a hold of his gun and ho 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 this thing. This thing annihilates enemies. It's pretty much a walk in the park from this point on, because there's absolutely nothing to stop you. It's a fantastic award for having fought your way to this point, and there is nothing more satisfying than taking out every last one of these scumbags who would not stop shooting your legs and locking you in position. Make them pay, Robocop. Make them pay. The final showdown is another first-person perspective, and we have to take out Dick Jones while he... Okay. I was going to say, while he holds someone hostage, but I swear, that guy is moving of his own accord. Look at this. He's not doing that against his will. He's literally moving in front of Dick Jones. Move out of the way, you idiot. I'm trying to uphold the law over here. This battle is a tough one, but it's worth getting through because when it's done, you get... A text screen. A text screen that tells you your actions have been worthless and you need to keep fighting crime. Son of a bitch. The game loops at this point, and you know what? It's to be expected. Robocop isn't a long game, and once you get the knack down for it, it's not too difficult either. There's a wonderful amount of variety, the graphics are top-notch, the music is superb, the sound effects are outstanding, the commitment to the franchise as a whole is wonderful. This is, without a shadow of a doubt, one of the best games to have graced the spectrum on the whole. And look, there's a snippet from the film that I haven't used yet, so allow me this really poor segue into using it. But if the game was still available to buy today, well then... I'd buy that for a dollar! <laughs>